Well, hello and welcome to part three of this carding, spinning, plying uh, videos, uh, which are my antidote to the snow. Outside, um, it's a very blizzardy, snowy day. Uh, we had a big, fresh fall of snow last night, which has drifted, so it's really deep. So this morning, um, I went down to do all the different poultry and I finally made the decision to put the goose in the polytunnel. I couldn't bear seeing her sitting out on the snow any longer. All the things I've done to try and make her warm. She's not interested in any of them. So I've put her in the polytunnel where she's busy eating her way through all my parsley, uh, winter salads, all the rocket that I was saving. She's going to eat the lot. I don't mind got some hens in there to keep her company as well. So let's get on with the plying then. So you left this then where I was spinning this. I'd already spun this bobbin full of the bluey greeny stuff, uh, turquoisey teal. And this one is all the pinks and purples. And they're about even uh, fullness there. So we're going to, as I was explaining, if you watched the previous one, I spin this by taking these fibres, lining them all up uh, carefully, and then uh, twisting it so that the spinning wheel puts a twist on it and stores it on the bobbin. Now, if you were to leave it like that and try and work it like that, there are people who do do things with one ply, but it's really hard to not have the thing unravel on you. So as I was explaining, I'm putting the twist in in one direction, and now, I'm going to ply the two of them in the opposite direction, which takes the, that twist back out again and neutralises it so that you end up with yarn. Now, the way to do that then, several ways, but the way I'm going to do that with this is, because I have two big full bobbins, I'm going to use this piece of equipment here, which is, it's got a lovely name, this is called a Lazy Kate. So it's aptly named for me because the, this snowy time I've been pretty lazy. <laughs> lazy Kate, that's me. So so we take we take this then. It's for another very simple piece of kit. And you put the wire through there to hold it in place. Now there are much more sophisticated lazy kates than this. Uh, all sorts. Some are integrated into the spinning wheel. Uh, this one has a third place at the bottom there to uh, so that you can make a three-ply wool, but we're just making two-ply today. I can't really spin thin enough. Uh, this will be quite thick yarn. So the, the waste yarn is true. Now, when I was spinning this, I was making the wheel go with the foot pedal that way so that the yarn was going that way. Now, in order to ply it, I'm actually going to make the yarn go the other way, the wheel go the other way. Okay then. So I just need to make sure that's going to take up. Check the tension again. With plying, the, the deal with spinning is that you want to try and get the um, wheel going really slowly so that you can control the amount of twist that goes onto the bobbin. With plying, you can go a lot faster. So the plying of this will be quite a bit uh, quicker. Okay then, so I'm going to take the two ends of the wool, the uh, single ply, the blue and the pink, and I'm going to put it through the little loop in the waste yarn, hold that together, and then being careful to remember to take the wheel the other way, I'm just going to twist this first bit really well so it, when it goes onto the bobbin, it's secure. And now I'm just going to pedal like Billio. And I'm watching, and because these two are completely different colours, I can see, I'll have to show you at the end, I can, uh, I can see how the twist is looking, whether it's too tight or too loose. Because as I said to you, what we're trying to do is neutralise that twist by pretty much taking the twist back out again and 
making the yarn stable. And there's a couple of other things that we have to do to stabilise the yarn, but this is the first one. Now, this, I'm looking, I'm watching this come through and I have pink and quite a lot of green coming through here. Well, what do you know? Pink and green. But the blues, the teals are going to come through as well. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to twist this yarn. You can see I can go really, really quickly with this now, much faster than when I was spinning. Yeah, so I was outside uh, earlier on looking at all the poultry. I was up half past seven, just out there, just checking that everybody had made it through the night. But basically, it was a very, very cold night last night, well, well below freezing, uh, with a lot of um, snowfall uh, and drifts as well. I tried to get some pictures, but it's too windy and cold to be outside for long, so I didn't get any any pictures of that. Um, I, I'll stick a picture of my back door in at the end of this, because there's huge, massive overhangs of snow. You don't want to be standing there when that one falls down on you. <laughs> but I'm quite content. I, I made a trip out to get some logs, and I brought a load of snowy logs in, and they're all in the porch. Uh, with the snow melting off them and they'll be fine. I've got two or three days worth of vlogs there now. Cats are really fed up about not being able to go outside. They all stand by the window one at a time. Put one paw out and then straight back in again. Although it is, oh, it's beautiful. It's very, um, I'm liking how the yarn's coming out. I'll show you soon. This is going to take quite a while, friends. Ooh, I'm liking how it's looking, though. So I've just tried to line up the camera so that you can see a different view of the spinning, of the plying because I think this is the fun bit here. Isn't that pretty? The way all those beautiful colours are coming together with that lovely kind of subtle striped effect. that to the last hook there then it'll fill that little bit up there so I carried on spinning this then for about another half an hour until the bobbin on the spinning wheel was full. There's still quite a lot of yarn left on the pink and the blue, uh, but I, I, you don't want to watch me doing that for half an hour or more. So I'm going to cut to the end now and show you how I take it off the uh, spinning wheel and make it uh, into knitable yarn. Here we go. Here we are. That's a pretty full bobbin. I'm going to show you the colours close up. <laughs> now, really pretty. I promised you a piece of kit called a Niddy Noddy. Here it is. It's a fantastic piece of kit. It's <laughs> very simple, uh, offset bits like so. And what happens now is I make a, a loop in the end because you're familiar with skeins of wool aren't you when you buy a skein of wool if you're a knitter well this is how the skeins are made so I'll make sure they're at right angles and then I'm simply going to wind this 
onto this clever piece of kit like that. It flows freely off the bobbin and I just wind it onto here. Everything about spinning is relaxing. Everything and colourful. Okay then, so this lovely slow process is another boring thing to watch possibly. <laughs> I was thinking about this when I was making these videos. They're all very slow, boring processes if you're not interested in this. I'm interested, obviously, so maybe you're not. We'll get back to poultry and the garden soon. As soon as all this white stuff goes away, I'm a bit sick of it now. It's pretty cold. Okay then, so this is going to go on for quite a while. I may spare you the, the whole length of it. So here it all is. So now I get some wool, just some ordinary waste yarn. And I try and get it in a different colour so that it's um, you can see it quite easily. And now, so if I took this off here now, it'll all just tangle and collapse. So I'm going to tie this now in a few different places. And I tie it like this. It can go through the skein a few more times than two, but two's enough. Okay, so we're going to tie this now in uh, four different places so that it holds it together. And then what we can do is slide that bit off there like that. Slide that bit off there. Get rid of my beautiful nitty noddy. <laughs> and there we have a rather gorgeous hank of wool. Now there is one more thing I need to do to it. I need to wet it in quite hot water so that all the fibres relax and then there's a weird thing I've read about this and seen videos about it. You have to then hit it sort of really hard when it's wet and it it, it seems to make all the fibres, the relaxed Wool, woolen fibres all relaxed together and all um, sort of set. I think it's called setting the yarn. So I'm going to go and do that now and then hang it to dry and then I will show you the finished ball. So here's the yarn after it's been washed in very hot water, hung to dry uh, with a weight on the bottom of it and there is the finished wool. I really like those beautiful splashes of colour and close up you can see those all that colour we put in there it's beautiful here's some windy dodgy pictures of the my back door with the snow drifts and the huge overhang of snow over the door there it's a bit wobbly I was going out to get logs I'm not going anywhere in that car anytime soon am I <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you next time.